folk and welcome everyone to the latest live Q&A with me, Sean, from Ren11. Today I have the fortunate uh, opportunity to speak to Frank Casti from Black Betty & Co, who is uh, who's joined us now. A couple of bits and pieces first of all. As you'll see at the bottom, uh, it's uh, a live interview. It's not just going to be questions from myself. It's also going to be questions from you folks. Um, so please, any of your uh, questions you want to ask uh, at, at the right opportunity with Frank, let us know. Also, another thing to uh, to add is uh, this is also going to be placed on YouTube uh, at a later date. Um, so you'll have an opportunity to listen to this if there's anything cool that comes out from this, which no doubt it will be. Uh, without much further ado, I am going to get Frank to join. I believe. Here we go. Any moment now with the uh, technology. Hey, Frank, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing, fellow? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad at all, sir. Uh, how has today been for you? It's been wonderful out here. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's uh, it's gorgeous weather. Obviously, it'd be great to be to be out and about, but we're uh, doing our bit by staying in and um, and uh, yeah, yeah, keeping people safe. Yeah, trying to be at least. Um, so. Thank you, firstly, for, for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know it's hot off the back of another interview you had done on Friday with Petrolicious, which, may I just say, was, was brilliant as well. Oh, cheers. That's really kind. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I always get a little bit nervous when doing interviews. So, um, no, that's kind of you to say that it, uh, that it went all right. Well, I think it was the, the information. And, and one of the things that grabbed me was right at the start was your story. And I believe that especially in the car industry, the car scene, everyone's yeah. got a really important story to tell about how they got in. And I, I think yours, especially the, uh, uh, the, the car chase is, is brilliant. And it's definitely something everyone's, it's worth everyone listening to again. So uh, could you tell us what got you into cars in the first place? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's like everyone, it's not just one single thing. It's, it's a mixture of different things. Um, the uh, when I was a kid, my mum bought me um, this movie called um, The Love Bug, uh, which had Herbie in it, and yes. uh, and uh, that that really resonated with me um, for some reason or another. And uh, so I, I had a I had a real interest in 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 Beatles growing up, and bit by bit that kind of led into um, learning about the Cowlick guys. Um, I liked the whole vibe of what they were doing. Um, there was a real sense of camaraderie from what I was reading. Um, they modified their cars, losing weight um, in favor of performance. Um, and eventually that kind of led on to, to reading about Porsches because it's part of the lineage. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, uh, and then as fate would have it, my dad eventually bought a 3.2 um, a, a Carrera. I think it was a, an 83 car. So not necessarily the most desirable of the 3.2s. It was also a Targa. Um, so it had the 915 gearbox, which... Uh, a lot of people don't tend to like, but personally, I think they're great for reasons I won't bore you with. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, so he had that, he had that car for, for for many years, and I spent a lot of time in um, in and around that car. And eventually, my mum drove me to kindergarten with that car, and uh, she was picking me up one day. There were um, there were I think it was two men in banner clubs ran across the street and uh, <laughs> jumped into an estate and sped off. Um, <laughs> And uh, she then went on to uh, to uh, to pursue them while asking me to remember the number plate. Um, and it, it, it felt like it felt like it went on for 15, 20 minutes. When in reality, at that age, it probably was only was only a two, three, five minute chase or something. But it really, it really resonated with me feeling that sensation of speed and, and hearing the sound of that, um, that flat six engine. Um, and eventually she let them go. The police showed up the next day at home um, and asked her for a formal statement. Um, and then eventually they, they, they got back to us telling us that um, they had found the car had been burnt to a crisp um, and it had been used in a robbery. And I think it was a jewelry store robbery or something of the sort. Um, but anyway, the point is, is that I went, I went back to, to, to school the next day and it was, um, it was just the, the best story to tell, you know, my classmates. Um, so yeah, so there are, there are many different pivotal moments like that, that really, 
that really resonated with me and, 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 and meant that I, I, I fell in love with 9-11s. Um, I think they're, they're you know, they're, there's, I think it's, it's potluck really what you fall in love with. I don't think there's a right or wrong car. Um, mm. You know, every, there are so many different ways to skin a cat. Um, for true. me personally, it just happened to be that it was Porsche. Um, they're very reliable. They go well in a straight line. They go well around corners. They're, they're super practical um, in reality with the with the four seats the rear ones can be used for luggage if you're going to be touring around europe or whatever um some of my best memories as a kid were were, were touring in europe so um so yeah yeah there's 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 a lot of many different great reasons and and the community the community is a, is, a, is a big part of it for me um you get to meet people from all different walks of life because the there is no demographic to a porsche owner you get everything from from uh, a two three grand boxster which is uh or, or 924 which are great cars all the way up to multi-million pound collector cars. So there's no room for pretensions or any of that kind of stuff. And, and I think that's really cool. Um, so yeah, sorry, that's a, a long winded answer. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it, I think it's a great answer and it's great to have that kind of early memory in your head of a car and, and it to really kind of resonate with you to the point of making you go, yep, this is it. This is where I see myself and this is where I feel comfortable with. Do you feel that the Porsche scene has changed in the last few years? I mean, you know, yourself, you're, you're still quite young, you, you, you know, and uh, you have an extensive collection of 911s, which we're going to go into as well very, very soon. Sure. Um, but do you feel that there's been a change of guard almost with the ownership? Do you feel that there's a, a, a different kind of vibe coming through the, uh, the Porsche community? It's, it's an interesting one because I think that, that question goes back to demographics, which is, you know, I, I, I think there, there isn't the demographic of a Porsche owner really because there's, there's so many different ways to skin a cat. If you look at Porsches and what people do with them, there's, 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 there's a very purist attitude where everything has to be numbers matching and um, it's all about originality, which is really cool. Um, there's a faction which enjoy hot rodding 911s um, with a more kind of period possible kind of vibe where they're very, they're quite, restrained in some ways mm. um there's another faction of people which are um uh, which are very much about extreme modifications um uh so so i think it's it's a very 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 demographic and i think there's there's room for everyone to play um i've got uh, a way that i do things what happens to work for me um but fundamentally i'm i'm not here to to cast a stone uh, or, or or you know i'm i'm, I'm cool with whatever people want to do um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, it was a quite interesting though. Uh, that, that, that kind of question I, I suppose came from when I uh, attended oil cooled the first event yeah. last year, which can I just say was, was brilliant. I loved it. You know, the start that the weather, I, I was so gutted at the start thinking, oh, please don't rain out. It's, yeah. it's, it's too good a venue for it to, to happen. And luckily it cleared up and it was a beautiful day. And the, the, the variety that was showcased there, not just in the uh, the field areas, but also um, right within the grounds of Boxing Gas, uh, where you have Auto Farm and, and your site. Uh, you had that 917 park bang in the middle. Uh, and then you just had a real mix of Outlaws and Classics and that 962 as well. It was just mm. like, wow. Um, and there was almost an appeal for every every facet of the Porsche community. Do you feel that now there's more of an acceptance? You said it's cool for the purists. That's great. They like that stuff. Do you think there's a, a level of acceptance now amongst everyone that everyone's view is, is kind of yeah, cool? And that's it? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. There are, there are some people which won't be as accepting as others, I'm sure. Um, but fundamentally, you know, f for me, like I said, it's, it's, that, it's that very wide demographic that attracts, the, the, that attracts me to, to the Porsche brand. Uh, or one of the reasons why it does. Um, with with all cool, the ingredients were very very simple. It was going to be about great food, great people, um, great cars, and great music. You know, those four ingredients were very pivotal, um, and that's what it was all about. It was there was there was no V. I I didn't want the event to have any VIP areas. Not that I've got a problem with that. Other people do that. That's fine. That's cool. Um, but with us, what I really wanted it to feel like is there was a real melting pot of 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 um, people's passion for Porsches. I, I didn't want to create any kind of VIP areas or any kind of exclusivity. It was all an inclusivity, which is what I think Porsche for me personally is about. It's about yeah. that inclusivity. Um, fundamentally though, you know, Boxing Gas is, what I've created is a, is, is kind of a platform or a stage 
Um, but what what it's it's like the saying that goes, you know, a, a, a house is only a house unless you have the people within it to turn it into a home. Um, you know, people make a house a home is what I'm trying to say. And I think with Box and Gas, it's it's very much about that. Yes, it is a uh, a project that I and my team have worked incredibly hard at for the last five years, but fundamentally it's the people that really make it. The people that worked on the project, um, Auto Farm who are based here, and the people who are kind enough to take an interest in what we're doing, um, and that came down to all court. Um, and I think that's, that's as long as we, we always keep that, that, that focus on knowing that it's all about the great brands that are represented at Boxing Gas um, and the great people that come along, then, then hopefully we create something that is, um, that is really for the Porsche community and, and not just for ourselves. Yeah, and you nailed it, man. You really did. Um, I appreciate uh, it. I, I, I echo. I I echo. <laughs> it was, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was, agree it, with you, man. That's cool. <laughs> it was a nerve wracking experience. You know, it was the first event that we'd done. I, I didn't know whether anybody was going to show up. Luckily people did buy tickets. So that was great. Um, and obviously the, the forecast we were looking at it on every single app you can imagine two weeks up leading up to it. So it, it was very nerve wracking. Um, but, you know, the, you know, um, Mother Nature was very blessed us on that day. And as you say, it rained for an hour and then everyone showed up and it was and it was great. Um, and it was very humbling to, you know, to, to feel that people wanted to 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 take part in what was what was uh, a bit of a harebrained idea. Um, what feels not that long ago. Yeah, no, you're right in saying that. I can't believe it was only it, it, it feels closer than August last year. Uh, we're closer to the next one you know fingers crossed with everything yeah. going so, yeah um... exactly exactly we're we're you know we're 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 paying close attention to everything we've got our, our worries like everyone else and and we're um and and we're we're hoping that things will clear up by then and and if it does then then we'll go ahead and if not we'll we'll postpone um but fundamentally our, our priority like everyone um is to is to is to make sure that everyone stays you know healthy and, and doesn't put themselves in danger and um and we'll do our best to make sure that we don't uh, we don't uh, we don't cause issue. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, it, it's about the people first. And and echoing what you said about the house and uh, the difference between a house and a home, it, it's so true. I had this conversation with Drew from Cool Collective on my live chat on Saturday, and we said that the cars bring the people in, but it's the mm. people that fundamentally keep the people there. You know, the, the sort of the friendships and the, the camaraderie that you build from making these. Uh, that events you know bring anyway and, and yours did exactly the same I, I made some fantastic friends that day so uh it's down to you mate thank you <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. but it's true i mean you know what's called when when i when i got into these cars um when i got into these cars it was it was it was the first one i bought was 15 years ago it was a 964 and, and hmm. 964s were the porsche that you didn't go near everybody banged on about how it was a car that, 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 that leaked oil from, uh, the, the, from the head cylinders, which they did because for the first year they didn't have a head gasket. They had dual mass flywheels, yeah. exactly. And, um, and there was that recession. So everybody hated those cars. So, um, so they were cheap, which was great because it led to a bunch of us that were tracking them and modifying them because it, the values didn't mean that it was um, prohibitive. Um, but there was, that, there was a real sense of community about it because we were all on a budget. So it meant that we were helping each other finding, you know, parts on eBay or, or wherever it may well be. And we were helping each other fix the cars up. And mm. there was a real community spirit about keeping the cars on the road. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. And I, I think that still, still resonates to, to this day for sure. Um, yeah. It, it actually brings us quite good. Well, to your car collection, because um, you have a car collection <laughs> for one of a better yeah. term. How yeah, many was, 911s? I remember there was 13 last year. Increased now? 14? Yeah, I think, I think actually, because the thing is, is there, are, there are a few cars that aren't here. Um, they're in very phases of, of modification. So, um, yeah, they're, 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 there are quite a few. Um, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a uh, little bit of an obsession that's gone a little bit crazy. I have a, a very understanding wife that, that puts up with it. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, it's just uh, over the years I've... I've I've seen bits and pieces that I, I wanted to get hold of, and 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 different project cars um, that uh, that that needed finessing or refining, or that I thought had strong foundations to build some kind of mongrel, as I call it, um, or a Frankenstein um, kind of Porsche. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you, you, your first one, you don't have your very first one from 15 years ago, do you? No, no, I don't. No, I don't. So that that car was. 
that car was probably the cheapest 911, well, one of the cheapest 911s, if not the cheapest 911, certainly 964 in the market at the time at, um, at eight grand. Um, it was either that or buy a, a hot hatch. Um, but, you know, uh, I wanted to, uh, I wanted that, that, that self-harm in, 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 in buying a, a complete lemon of a car and, and having to deal with all the, having to deal with all the, the, the pains of keeping a car that wasn't that much disrepair on the road. Um, but no, that car eventually, um, the, 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 the head studs broke on it and they needed an engine rebuild and they, they quoted me eight grand for an engine rebuild, which is, which is very cheap for today's money, to be honest. And, uh, Amazing. and that's, that's the same value as the car. So I, I had to, I had to chop it in. So no, sadly, I don't, I don't have that 964 anymore. But a few years later, I, uh, I bought another one that had a supposed engine rebuild, um, for a little bit more. And that car is called Black Betty and that car has been off the road for about six years as I'm building into the next iteration of what it is. Uh, last update, I remember you saying it was about two months ago, possibly, and it was going through metal work. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So um, it's, it's had an extensive amount of metal work done. Um, some, 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 yeah, uh, a lot of different work, a lot of carbon fiber work. So there's been a lot of 3D scanning to reproduce our, our own parts and carbon fiber. The, the project originally started off as, as it was going to be a, um, some, 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 some modifications with available things on the shelf. And then it got to a point where a lot of the stuff that was out there um, didn't have the kind of right fit and finish that I was happy with. Um, and over the years, I've been lucky to meet some, some, great, um, some, great, uh, some great people that, that have a lot of skill sets um, in terms of restoring and, and, and building parts of these cars. So, you know, um, so it, it kind of turned into a, into a project that's, that's, that snowboarded into this, this massive thing. So there's, the engine is with, um, with uh, an engine builder called Nick Ford James, who's since pretty much semi-retired. Um, metal work is down in, in um, Andover. Um, carbon fiber is being done up in Bista, so very local to Boxing Day. Oh, nice. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 um, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a very big project. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe this year will be the year that it's finished, but it's certainly not something I'm rushing because it's really a car that I've, that I have a lot of love and a lot of passion for because it's created, I've created the most memories with it. Um, I've done track days with it. I've done uh, Alpine tours. Um, and it's, uh, it's something that's very close to my heart because it's so personal. Yeah. You kind of created a brand around it as well, if you consider, you know, Black Betty and Co. Black Betty being that, <laughs> that 64 and Co. being yeah. the rest of the, the, the 911 troops that you got. Yeah, um, so it was, it was, it wasn't, it was, it was, I can't remember, the, the name popped into my head a, 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 a long time ago. And all it was is a, is a forum handle for, there's, there's a Porsche um, forum called Pelican Parts and Renlist. Yeah. Um, yeah, which, which before the days of social media, that's where everybody was. And, um, and it was just, it was just the, the username that I used on there. And it's, it's kind of, I didn't, I didn't have one for, um, and it's kind of stuck. I just ended up using it for other bits and pieces. And, and, and here we are. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and the collection grows. Are you anywhere near the cars right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Um, Let's do it. Because I, I love the names as well, you know, you've got for them. So if you, uh, obviously Black Betty being, being one, you've got Memphis as well. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I, I, I um, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of naming cars. Um, there's, uh, there's, yeah, there's, there's a few different names for a few different cars. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm the same man. I'm in the same boat as you. I've always called my cars names, except mine were um, kind of being a child of the '80s. My, my passion was Transformers. It's kind of why yeah. I got into Porsche because of jazz. Um, mm -hmm. So every car has been called a Transformer name. Which, uh, yeah, I'm a nerd, but hey, I'm uh, guilty. <laughs> No, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It was the original 1987 Transformers film is really the one, isn't it? Yeah, of course. G1 all the way, man. Especially with, yeah. uh, you know, you got the touch. Um, what a tune. Uh, yeah. Pure is, 80s. That? is that Van Halen? I forget now. No, that was Stan Bush. Stan Bush? Stan, Stan Bush, Bush yeah, yeah. 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 Quality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, okay, so I've been doing a bit of research. Um, Tina? Which is your 930? Yeah, so um, so this car is a, it's an 89 uh, 930. Uh, the 930 started off in 1975 as Porsche's production um, turbo 911. Yeah. And in order for them to homologate for racing, um, the first ones were three liters non-intercooled. This is the last uh, year of the 930. So it's an 89 car, which is the only year 
They were available with a uh, G50 transmission. Um, and this one is the later car. So it's a, a 3.3 turbo with, a, um, with an intercooler. Um, the modifications to this car are, there are, there are a few, but it's not as extensive or as crazy as other ones. Um, it's running from memory, it's a K27 turbocharger, um, running at a little bit over a bar of boost. Um, the intercooler is an annual intercooler, so very period. Um, the exhaust is a baller exhaust. Um, otherwise, it's running some stiffer bill shines. Uh, the car's been dropped um, a fair bit on its original torsion bars. Um, and then otherwise, I've, I've powder coated the wheels black. Um, and then I've, I've stuck a Porsche deck out down the side just to toss it up a little bit. Um, yeah. It's a, to me, this is kind of the, um, this is kind of the epitome of uh, an air-cooled turbo. People mm. talk about how the 964 Turbo was the, the last of the Widowmakers in terms of, of regular production cars. But in reality, I think this one um, is much more of a sledgehammer compared to the 964 Turbo. It's got much more of that period kind of lag. Um, a lot of people talk about lag like it's a negative. Personally, I think it's, um, it's an absolute right. It's a laugh. It keeps you on your toes. Um, and you can Isn't it the drum roll the before point. the show starts? Yeah, exactly. It's a bit of a drum roll with the, before the show starts. And when it gets, when it gets going, it's, it's, it's a real sledgehammer we're talking about. I, I've never had it on a dyno, but my, my butt dyno tells me this is probably around 400 horsepower is what I'd say. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it definitely keeps you on your toes, yeah. And the interesting thing about this car is um, it's specced with, um, it's got comfort seats. Um, ah. It's not usually something you see in turbos, usually the, the sports seats. Um, so there's, that's the comfort seats have the, um, for those that don't know, have, the, uh, have very little bolstering on the bolsters, whereas the turbo seats are much, um, are, are, yeah, hold you in a lot better than this. Um, so yeah, apart from that, everything here is, um, is aesthetically or, or even mechanically, it could be put back to stock. Um, they're relatively rare 89 turbos. So relatively speaking, I didn't want to do anything that would make it, um, that would, that would make it irreversible, which is certainly the case with some of the cars in here. Yeah. Is, is that kind of a, a common theme with a lot of your builds? Uh, I know that, uh, Susie Q, the Polo Silver 964 anniversary, um, yeah. the, ah, wicked. She's there as well. Um, a lot of the modifications are, on her are, are reversible as well. And unfortunately, it's a factory wide body, isn't it? Yeah. So actually, the the Suzy Q story, if there is such a thing, um, actually it started off with a different anniversary edition. Um, there oh. were uh, there were twelve um, right hand drive Polar Silver anniversary editions. The anniversary editions are for those that don't know are a wide body Nashi aspirated 964. Um, they were in theory going to produce 911 of them, um, but in, they couldn't get all of them sold. They were only available in Viola or Polo Silver. Um, they've got a few different um, plaques on them to denote uh, that they're an anniversary edition. Um, the first one I had, I did pretty much exactly what I'm doing to this car, but unfortunately in a Alpine tour, I had complete brake failure going into a hairpin. Um, and the result of that was a slip disc in my neck and the car unfortunately didn't make it down the other side, which is something I, I feel very guilty about. But at the same time, um, you know, it's what I'm very happy to, 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 to be alive and, uh, yeah. and, you know, these things happen, um, and I'm wiser for it. And well, I, at least I hope I am. <laughs> in some way, <laughs> form. So this is kind of after getting through that, which was, which was physically very, very difficult and, and mentally very difficult because I was going through a lot of different things when it came to, uh, when it came to my work life balance. Um, I kind of wanted to, 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 to resurrect this kind of project I had in mind. So I got hold of this car um, not, too, not too long ago, actually. I think it was um, about two years ago at the very most now. Um, and everything that I'm doing here to answer your question, yeah, it's fully reversible. So um, mechanically, uh, there's been quite a few different modifications. I'm now running a uh, Bilstein PSS 10 system, which is a three-way adjustable system. Uh, Bilstein are also the sponsors of All Cooled this year. So big shout out to them. Very um, cool. Then I'm running a, an HNR stiff anti-roll bar on this. Um, and then we've got, um, again, more period possible modifications. It's always got to look like it's, it could have been done in period is my, is the kind of my rule of thumb. So I'm running a, a tech art front duct, uh, with a fog incorporated to cool the brakes, um, which are now a 964 RS, um, calipers. 
Inventive Discs, a tech art front splitter. Um, and I've just been ducting that through, although I really need to get on and get this one finished. Um, inside, we've got a pair of Recaro A8s. Yeah. So, oh, man, they're beautiful. Cheers. So these, are, these ended up coming from Thailand in the, in the end is where I found them. These are Gen 1s. Um, which you can tell by the, the, the blue on the on the bottom half of the seat. Normally, that would be leather on the Gen 2s. Um, so these were trimmed by a, a friend of mine called Dave from Dave the Trimmer, who did a really oh, good Dave job. Dave the Trimmer, he's yeah, in yeah. Little Teens, isn't he? Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. So yeah, we just yeah. did them in a, a plain black Riviera blue to pick up off the blue hues of the polar silver um, and the calipers. And what I like about these is that this, uh, these are still reclinable, so I can still get to the rear seats. Um, there's still a fair amount of bolstering. Um, shoulder support is, is, is always really good to have in a, in a pair of seats when you want to be connected to, to what, what the car is doing. Yeah. Um, we've got a, um, uh, a <sighs> Porsche, design, Porsche Momo. design Momo. Yeah, cheers. So I picked that up at, at Essen a couple of years ago, and it's to be sit on the shelf waiting for the right project. Um, so it's finally here. Actually, on the while we're here on the gear knob, you can see the silver there. That's the um, that shows normally on a normal nice floor that'd be black, but on the anniversary it's silver. And then over here we've got a plaque on the rear deck, which is written backwards, so that when you read it in the rear view mirror, <laughs> you see it the way way round. Um, so yeah, so that Such was one of Porsche's way to denote the car. Yeah. Here as well, and on the rear of the deck lid. Um, engine is still a three point six. Nothing's changed there. I've done an RS clutch and a lightweight flywheel, um, which will help keep the, uh, the engine um, nice and revvy between gear changes. Yeah. And I'm running a, um, a fab speed stainless twin exhaust um, outlet, which just is a bit more freer flowing, better soundtrack. Um, otherwise, the big modification here, you can see the wheel is sitting very, very far in. And what I've done there is I've gone with a narrow body um, set of uh, nicest four trading arms. Um, and what that does is it loses some of the weight on the rear, um, which is always a good thing to do on 911s for obvious reasons. And, um, and then what it does also is it, um, allows me to, uh, um, it allows me to run like a deep dish wheel. Um, so effectively, the look of this car will be like a 3.8 RSR, um, but without the big spoiler on the rear. Um, but the point is, is that usually the car speaks to me. So if it's something that's relatively rare like this, um, I don't want to be sacrilegious or blasphemous, so the modifications are, are fully reversible. Um, I set out with with a build thinking exactly what it is I want to achieve. So with this car, it needed to be comfortable enough for the missus to get in, because there are some cars that she absolutely refuses to get into. <laughs> and um, I hear that. and uh, so this is an example of like a, a B-road kind of bruiser that my wife will still be happy to get into. It's got a certain amount of creature comforts. It could tour Europe quite easily. Um, so everything that, I, everything that I've, I have has a very specific purpose. Um, it's a very, in my mind, quite an undiluted way of, 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 um, of building a car is to be very, um, very specific about what it is the car is going to achieve before you even start doing the modifications in the first place. Memphis. Yeah. I, I, one of the things I, I wanted to touch on actually, and you, you kind of touched upon it quite a lot uh, during that segment on CCQ. Um, someone had, I remember you were testing on your yellow, is it Le Mans? Yellow 964 that you got the career RS. Yeah. So that was a, yeah, unfortunately it's not here anymore. Uh, mm. That car's moved on. Um, it's, that was a summer yellow car. Summer yellow, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was a summer yellow Shows color. funny on screen, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, so yeah, yeah. I always get mixed up. Um, sure. And I remember a... you, were, you, were, you were kind of toying with the idea of putting uh, a Porsche, um, you know, a vinyl across on it, and oversized, a bit similar to Tina. And someone said, oh, you don't want to do that. Why would you ever do that? You've got to be smaller. And then your statement was, my car my rules mm. and i suppose you know you've touched upon that mantra with with what you try and do everything's reversible um you know are there any other things that you focus on when it comes to your builds uh, is there like a sort of a yeah it, it depends it always depends yeah yeah absolutely so it, it depends like for example you know the this anniversary edition is is a very rare car so fundamentally here everything has to be fully reversible whereas for example over here we've got a carrera 4 964 with 348,000 miles <sighs> everything on this car is in is is a right state um you know what's called it's got rust on every single panel pretty much uh, the engine is very shot 
um, you know, everything needs doing, needs doing on this car. So this is not a rare car. This is a high mileage car. Um, and to me, that means that it's blank canvas. Um, so with that car, I can go absolutely crazy. I can do the wildest kind of build, relatively speaking. But with me, it is, always has to be something that, that is kind of period possible. But I mean, the sky's the limit. So with this, I can do fully reversible molds, uh, modifications, whether it's getting rid of the rear mirrors and welding these holes up for some cup mirrors, um, welding up the indicator holes so that it's a bit more streamlined. Um, or whether it would be deleting rain gutters, which is what you see here on the 993. Yes. Um, so, so effectively, the car, I think the car kind of speaks to you. There are certain things that some cars, I don't want to go the whole hog because they're, they're, they're relatively rare, so they have to be reversible. Other cars, um, you know, what's called, I think, allow you to go, to go absolutely crazy, um, for want of a better word. Um, and then there are other cars, like, for example, this car, which is a, a very original 3.6 turbo, um, which is believed to be the only right-hand drive uh, God's Red 964 uh, turbo delivered to the UK. Um, so with that car, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't have the heart to do anything, um, anything, anything wild, and, and certainly it remains pretty much completely stock. Um, another example of that is, is this car. So this is a 69, um, 69S. 69 was the the first year for the long wheelbase. Yes. Um, it was also the last year for the two liter engine. And 69, yeah. they introduced MFI to the E and the S. Um, so this is also with the, the UK press car for that year. Um, so it's, it's a rare thing with a lot of provenance. So with this thing, I'm, I'm, I'm being very respectful of what it is um, and making sure I look, for, I look after it for the next custodians. So, so here, all the modification, oh, there won't be any modifications. It is literally a case of being very respectful Jesus. to the original car. That is see, some rot. <laughs> it needs it needs a hell of a lot of work. It needs a hell of a lot of work. And so, for example, if it was a if it wasn't if it wasn't a car that was as um, as perhaps rare as this car, um, then then I would use maybe some aftermarket panels, which can often fit better than original Porsche panels. Um, but for a for a car like this one, where um, originality is key and it, it really warrants it because it is, it is a special thing that I'm looking after. Um, I, I think it's, it deservingly needs um, original Porsche panels that will be backdated or modified so that they, they fit perfectly. Um, so yeah, so to answer your question in a very long-winded way, again, um, it, it's, all about, it's all about what, what the car really wants, what the car really needs, how rare the car is, um, that kind of thing, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, you, you mentioned about anything you, you with. I think it was with regards to the Porsche design Momo steering wheel. You had it on your shelf. Um, I was fortunate enough, as I say, when when uh, oil cooled was uh, was on, to have a, a proper mooch around your your office, for want of a better term. Because let's be honest, you've got a desk up there with a computer, so it's, it is an office. Um, a nice office, bear in mind you have such a wicked collection of wheels on that back wall by the entrance that it's uh, there we go. And I remember just walking through them going, that's proper nice LMs. Look at the space, the size of them and everything. You've got the roof wheels as well. It's just like, and then you yeah. had another set of Recaro A8s. Were they red backed as well? Or? I no, I, no, no, pole positions. Pole positions. positions. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's just, I, I think it's by virtue of, of, of having, you know, of being lucky enough or I, I'm humbly um, lucky enough to have uh, as many cars as I do, um, you pick up a lot of parts, especially when you start modifying things and so on. Um, believe it or not, I have another building, um, which is a very, very small little unit where I keep the other kind of Porsche parts that I've accumulated over the, over the years, whether it's bonnets or, 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 or bits and pieces. Um, I have got a bit of a wheel fetish. Um, it's true. Um, actually, here is, is is a quite quite an quite a quite an example of of, um, of the different variations of wheels that you can have. So you've got here you've got a BBS E eighty eight, which yeah. is which is based on the BBS um, E twenty eight, um, which was a magnesium wheel um, that had a lot of um, that had a lot of texture to it. Um, later that and also were quite hard to service because magnesium is is is, is quite a hard thing to, to to keep on top of so they eventually upgraded to aluminium and they've scalloped it to lose a little bit more weight mm -hmm. um 
but these are a motorsport wheel they're they're an aluminium dish uh, it's a very lightweight center so these tend to bend on potholes and things that aren't as smooth racetracks um so fundamentally these are more of a motorsport wheel um which personally i would recommend more for for, for motorsport cars um whereas over here you've got a roof wheel which is known as a heavyweight wheel um if you listen to 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 to, to what's called to uh, mr roof he'll tell you that a heavier wheel um uh, um increases the um the unsprung weight and as a result acts very well as an absorber of uh of potholes and and um and cracks in the road and this and the other and it actually smooths hands out is another way of smoothing out stiffer suspension um so for something like an alpine tour um i used to do a lot of alpine tours i haven't done one in a little while i'm hoping that this year i might be allowed out um if my wife lets me to do an alpine tour this year and I'll probably be using this kind of wheel if I do, because it's a it's a very strong, it's a very heavy wheel that can that can really that can really um, that can really deal with the punishment. Um, whereas something like a, a BBS um, E88 is really not something you want to take on an Alpine Tour, where the roads suffer from freeze fall weathering and you end up with a lot of potholes and things and so on. So, you Definitely. know, I, I really look for functionality and performance in in whatever parts that is that I'm putting on to. Um, onto onto cars but here's here's quite a cool one this is a prototype for a wheel that i've um i've developed myself um so this is a um an inspiration from a porsche teledal wheels there's a bit of lamborghini kind of wheel in there as well yeah i was gonna um, say it reminds me of the diablo diablo wheel yeah 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 exactly yeah. it's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's 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 a bit of a marmite wheel um this is in its raw format so this still has all the machining marks on it. It's a solid piece of, uh, of billet aluminium that's then um, from a CAD design uh, CNC'd into the shape. Um, the, the dishes uh, and barrels are just off the shelf hardware. Um, so that's, that makes them very easily serviceable. They're extremely light. They're scalloping on the back. Um, and I've designed them so that the fronts and the rears don't match because, for example, on the rear of a car, you have a smaller caliper. So that allows you to um, get closer to the get closer to the caliper um, oh, and nice. therefore you can save weight um, and also you move the center of the wheel to the center uh, the center the, the center of the wheel to the center of the dish and the barrel if that makes sense yes so this is this is a wheel that's 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 um that's highly engineered i've worked with some great people and um, putting this one together some some guys i've, I've done previous cars in the past um, and it's, this is still a prototype. There's, we're probably about two more of the revisions in with a few more aesthetic tweaks and, and strengthening tweaks, but they're, they're, they're very centric. So the, the dishes and the barrels line up um, before you even have to put the bolts through. Um, yeah, and they're just, they're just a very, very strong um, kind of wheel and, and eventually they'll be available in, with either aluminium or stainless dishes, depending on your application, whether you're using them for street use or road use. Um, but that's a, a whole nother story for another day. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're, uh, yeah. You have, may I say, OCD levels of attention to detail. I mean, like, like it, it, we're talking about little things like you, what you were mentioning about that wheel and the design process, even just for the rear wheels. That is serious sort of stand hoping at its best when you're thinking in depth, how is this going to work? How, would you say your OCD has had a positive effect in everything that you do with box and gas, as well as oil cooled, as well as your, your you know, your, your career at, at large? Yeah, um, it is and it isn't. Um, you know, the benefits of it are, are the benefits of, 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 of being like that, um, if that makes sense. But I think there, there, there are some occasions where um, it can be it can be a bit inhibiting and it can be a little bit difficult um, and it certainly makes it um, it certainly can make it very difficult to to work with me um, and it can be <laughs> difficult for for my wife to put up with it but um you know what's called it's it's all about uh, meeting people which are you know and working with people which are um which which have the same kind of passion that you do um, the same kind of drive um, and and fundamentally who are who are more intelligent than you and can bring more to the table the day that you are the smartest man in the room is the day you stop learning. Um, so what's called, I've always tried to, to humbly learn as much as I can, sponge as much as I can, um, and, and, and work with people that have got a, a wealth of experience um, uh, beyond my skill set so, um, so that what we achieve together is, is bigger than the sum of its parts. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, in some way. <laughs> uh, I, no, no, I agree. I, I think you find that 
if you are working, if you're fortunate enough to have a team around you and the team are smarter than you in many different facets, um, it's probably a blessing in disguise because you have people that are able to help in every facet of, of every anything you kind of want, really. Uh, and and when you have that kind of level of attention, it's it's always uh, attention to detail. It's always a blessing. Yeah. Um, did, how has that also transfer transpired with your buildings? Because if yeah. we, if we consider boxing gas, right? You have, at, well, at the time when I was there, you have one building that's split into two, which is yours and the next door. You have Auto Farm, and then you've got a little sort of office area, amenity area on the outside as well. Yeah, and that's right. Um, your side. So the, so t yeah, um, the buildings were, when we were searching for a site for Box and Gas, um, we were looking for a place uh, that had the right location. Location was key. We wanted people to be able to get here um, on uh, relatively easily. Where we are situated, we are an hour and 30 minutes from over 50% of the UK's population. Um, so hopefully that gives another reason for people to come, to come over. Um, we looked at several different sites. Um, we had a few sites um, that, that fell through for various different reasons. But effectively, yeah, the location was important. The right amount of buildings that could be converted um, to the usage that we wanted to apply was really important um, and the right amount of land um, so that we could host events as well. Um, and fortunately, um, shortly after the, the first place, we put an offer into, um, into uh, uh, contingent on planning permissions being put through had, been, um, had, had, uh, ha had fallen through. And then um, a few days later, my wife... Uh, said asked, told me not to lose hope and we we went back at it and and amazingly we found uh the location the box and gas is now in um when we got here the buildings um were old um old grain store buildings they were agricultural buildings mm. um they certainly weren't fit for purpose um there was uh there was asbestos all over the the um all over the roof um, fortunately, it was in sheets, so even though we had hazmat suits, we didn't have to break it apart. Cool, um, good, safe. Effectively, the, one of the biggest challenges was that, um, and we had trees growing in, in that corner over there, actually, there was a tree growing. Um, they, were, <laughs> they were a right old mess. They were, they were leaking. It was, it was quite a disaster, to be honest with you. Um, but um, so we, we had to, our restrictions meant that we had to... Um, we had to build the car, uh, we had to sorry we had to build the buildings based on the original framework. So what you see here are the original uh, concrete rafters that we had to retain, um, and that proved quite an engineering challenge because it effectively meant that in order to attach the purlins, um, we had to engineer these red caps that go over the steels, uh, that go over the concrete, yeah. cool. um, so the purlins could attach them. So that was a very big engineering challenge, and when you're building something that's not um, uh, generic, uh, for want of a better word, you have to um, you have to design every element of it. There isn't any off-the-shelf parts, is what I'm trying to say, because mm. a lot of these industrial units can be off-the-shelf. Um, so yeah, we feel, did that. I was just going to say, do you feel that your um, ability to kind of see things past what they look like has helped you in your creation of your buildings as well? You know, everything's not, it's not off the shelf. Everything you've got to kind of plan in advance or almost create uh, on the fly. Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting challenge. If I'm honest, it would have been, you know, um, a lot quicker and a lot more economical to start from scratch, knock the buildings mm. down and start again. Um, but the reality is that we didn't have that option um, when it came to building the space. So we had to adapt the buildings so that they could, um, well, we had to rebuild the buildings uh, so that they could, they could accommodate. Um, originally, these were breeze blocks. Here, I've gone with a, um, a reclaimed style brick um, with uh, conduits, galvanized exposed conduit. Um, the floors are uh, concrete. Um, so here we've got, um, let me just think, it's 100 140. It's 120 tons of concrete in this unit alone reinforced um, reinforced with rebar um, so that effectively the space would work for, for multiple different purposes um, because effectively I built this place as a folly not knowing whether we were, able going to, we were going to be able to fill the spaces. Um, I'd, I've done, I'd done a, a hell of a lot of research to, to, to find out who could potentially be interested in taking these buildings but when we first started we didn't have anyone lined up so 
the the goal was that the buildings could be used for multiple purposes. If it wasn't a poor specialist, it would have ended up being a any kind of automotive specialist. And if it wasn't an automotive specialist, then it would have been any kind of um, any any business rea in reality. Um, so you're so quite open. Yeah, so we were quite open. The, the goal was to have a Porsche specialist for this to be a destination Porsche. But fundamentally, there were no guarantees. So there were backup plans um, so that any business could take up this space should I have failed in my mission. Um, but fundamentally, we were very fortunate. And um, in the end, there were 15 different businesses that were interested in taking the space. Um, one of the, some of them were Porsche specialists, big name ones. Some of them were smaller ones. and Some of them were just automotive brands. Um, I eventually met up with Auto Farm and, and experience has taught me that, you know, business is all about relationships. It's all about people. Um, yes. And I get along with Auto Farm like a house on fire. Um, we have great chemistry and we have very, um, we have very, uh, uh, very, uh, our objectives are very much in line. Um, and so, so, so it was a real, it was brilliant. It was a real meeting of minds when they came aboard Auto Farm. You know, for those who don't know, their Porsche specialist has existed since 1973. Um, they're probably the longest Porsche, standing Porsche specialist in the UK. Um, they've restored more 27 RSs than any Porsche specialist probably in the world. Um, they're very, very good at what they do. Um, and I think that what that means is it offers a level of servicing, restoration, and most importantly, knowledge about these old cars. And even though they do deal with the new ones as well, um, that, uh, that, that the people can uh, benefit from when they come to experience what um what is available down at boxing gas um mm. yeah that's brilliant so, yeah. it's uh again it, it kind of blows my mind a little bit the attention to detail even in the construction of the building but you know it's it's something i kind of I, I think everyone's getting used to that from you and that's it's a real real cool thing to have to be fair man so uh well played. Cheers. I see the OCD Thanks. as a benefit and a bonus, man. Believe me. <laughs> Thanks. No, that's sweet. I think, you know, official, official Porsche centers are, are awesome places. There, there's a lot of brush steel and, and uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of glass. Mm. Um, and I think that's perfect for what they do. And, and it's, um, well, we wanted to do something that was very much our own. Um, and in keeping, with the, in keeping with our kind of um, our, our, the heritage of, of, of Porsche, um, with the fact that an independent would be based here. Um, and so the, the buildings are very industrial. Mm. It's very much exposed, um, exposed steels, exposed lights, um, a lot of concrete render on the wall. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very industrial building. It's, um, yeah, it is what it is. So, oh, yeah, so at, the moment, at the moment we've built um, two buildings so far. So there's, um, I'll take a step outside and give you a show. That's um, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, so unfortunately at the moment with the lockdown going on, uh, there isn't much I can show you outside. Um, normally the courtyard, which you're about to see, is absolutely rammed with Porsches um, that we have an overspill car park that uh, comes into play. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, we'll give you an impression of, of what, what I've been working on for the last five years or so. So this is the, the outside courtyard. And now, um, normally, day to day, um, when there's, there isn't a virus on, this, uh, this courtyard would be completely round with Porsches. Um, inside this building is Auto Farm's main workshop. So they have servicing restoration work in there and amenity block for their staff. Um, and then over here, we have another unit that belongs to them. And these two oh. buildings, yeah. So in, in this one, they, um, they're still figuring out what to do with the space. because so we've only been open since July of this year. Um, and they only moved in in, uh, what was it, uh, July last year, sorry. Um, and they only moved in in March of last year, really. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they're still figuring out what to do with that space. So far, there's 16,000 square feet built. And then mm -hmm. over there in the background, you can see a building over there. That yeah. building is actually deceptively, um, deceptive. It's, it's deceptively, uh, it looks a lot smaller than it actually is. It's actually 24,000 square feet. Um, and uh, that'll be coming over, that'll be coming up over the next couple of years or so, and that'll be for um, for more Porsche related businesses uh, to go into. Uh, and then behind this building, we've got another building coming along as well, um, with uh, about six thousand square feet, um, which will fulfil more of our 
more of our, our hospitality based services, which will have a box and gas, giving people an excuse to come down here on a more regular basis. Um, I like the sound of that, man. I, I can't say more that. than that about those buildings because <laughs> it's, it's commercially sensitive to the brands which will be moving into those buildings. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to ask. Yeah, no, sure. Um, <laughs> as much as I would love to scream it from the rooftops, it's, it's something I've got to be uh, commercially sensitive of. Um, um, but effectively, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a long curve, um, a long journey, uh, uh, building these buildings with a lot of sleepless nights and, and uh, a very, very understanding um, uh, family um, and a very outstanding wife and friends um, who, who've, who've uh, put up with the fact that I'm, uh, I'm often uh, swamped with, uh, with, 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 uh, with, with the workload of what this, uh, this whole thing has entailed, really. Yeah. With the with the way it's it's grown and, and what's what's going on with, with boxing gas and, and the level of support, do you feel that if you didn't have that support from your family and from your wife, would do you feel that you would have been as successful as you have been with it? Mm, well, that's very kind of you um to say, but um I think that I think that the the fundamentally um yeah, having having that rock and that, that belief system behind you is incredibly important. Um, my, my wife is someone who's incredibly supportive. Um, there's, I've had to make a lot of sacrifices to, to, to build this place. There's a lot of things that I've missed out that I will never have the opportunity to, to do again, whether it's been birthdays, funerals, weddings, believe it or not. Um, and so. another important thing is life events like that, that I, that I won't get a chance to get back. But, you know, my, um, my my wife has been incredibly supportive um, throughout it all. There's been there's been a lot of tough times, um, which is to be expected with 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 something of this kind of project magnitude. But that's not to say that you know I I don't I don't uh, appreciate you know um, uh, what a what a what a brilliant journey this has been, um, and uh, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. There are some very tough days. There are some absolutely amazing days. But having said that, you know when when I see the buildings busy with, with people working in them and I see people like yourself, you know, taking a kind interest in, in what I'm doing here and people coming to all called, it really, really does make it all worthwhile for me that I've been lucky to be involved with something or, or, or crazy enough to build something that the people could take a kind interest in, um, in, in taking part of. Um, so yeah, no regrets. Um, but uh, but certainly um, uh, certainly something that's uh, that that's, that's been an epic journey um, for sure. I hear you, man. Um, thank you for that answer as well. I know it was quite. A, uh, I, I like to find out those kind of the driving forces behind what people do. I think that come uh, that's where good stories come from. So um, we've got a few questions from yeah. the, the the viewers. Um, I've got a gentleman here, Fatah Jihad. Uh, what are your thoughts on the 996 Turbo? Yeah, I think that there's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so addicted to Porsches that um, fundamentally there's not a product that they do that I don't, but I don't respect that I don't love. Um, I'm, I'm often pigeonholed as, a, a, as an air-cooled guy and I totally get that. But, um, but fundamentally what, what, what interests me is... Um, is really the the stories that people tell with their cars, whether it's chai days they've been on, or Alpine tours, or great memories, or bonding experiences they've had with um, with with other people who are passionate about um, about cars. I think the the 996 Turbo is a is a phenomenal car. It's incredibly capable, um, incredibly sophisticated, um, and incredibly usable. A lot more usable than what you get out of the air cool cars for sure. Um, I think it's a, it's a great purchase, especially at this price point. Um, they don't suffer from some of the issues that the non tri aspirated cars have. Um, I think it's it, it's a brilliant car, and I've seen a lot of performance modifications done to them that um, that have been um, that have been very successful. So I think it's 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 a great it's a great car, and you know it should give people tons of memories to um, to cherish um, with a car that's like that. I I personally have owned um, a couple of water cooled Porsches. Um, I've had a, a 997 Turbo S that I absolutely loved. Um, phenomenal car, incredible amounts of turn in, um, extremely powerful, very, very usable, um, but in, in, in uh, very, very usable, terrifyingly fast, if I'm quite honest. Um, 
yeah, you suddenly need to reprogram your brain um, at, at the pace at which things happen. Yeah. Um, for sure, I think I think they're they're brilliant cars. Yeah, so you know what's called I um, I'm open to anything Porsche um, and anything car related. To be honest with you, um, you know if someone's into 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 minis, I've got a friend who's into into Alphas and he's been hot rodding that um, and uh, and um, and yeah, so 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 anything car related, any anything people can 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 really share share experiences from um, I'm, I'm into. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think we've got time for one last question and my quick five questions. So the last question sure. is from a friend of ours, mutual friend, Yaz, with his uh, wonderful blue back date, uh, yeah. IROC RS, RSR. Uh, how, how's the 74 RSR rebuild going? Can you update us on the build so far? Yeah. Um, so for those that don't know, I have a um, 74 RSR hot rod thing. It's a bit of a mongrel again. Um, it was a it was a track car um, that was originally built by a friend of mine. Um, he it's a very extreme car, but interestingly enough, he only ever used it on the road. Um, it's uh, it's a car that um, that is powered by a um, three and a half liter EFI um, fully forged engine, so uh, bow tail case, forged rods. Um, uh, uh, JE pistons from memory, mild barrels. It's running Can M system, um, an independent throttle bodies. I think they're PMOs from memory. And that car, I've used it on track um, for for many years. Um, and now I'm in the process of converting that car into a race car. Um, so that basically means going through the running gear, um, rose jointing, motorsport suspension, um, and uh, installing. Uh, all the equipment for it to be FIA specs. We're talking FIA spec um, roll cages, um, fire extinguisher, uh, plumbed in, um, Recaro's, uh, FIA Recaro's, just slowly turning into a race car. And that'll be a, um, a club race car that I'll use for club racing. Um, so yeah, that, that yeah. car is coming along well. Obviously things are slowed down now because of, um, because of what's going on in the grander scheme of the world. Um, so uh, we're at the stage now where the, the cage is in. It's going to go off to the paint shop for, uh, for a lick uh, now that the cage can be painted. Um, and then it will be a case of getting all the new running gear uh, onto the car. I'll be doing a set of Olins on that, which I'm really excited about because I've never done anything with Olins before. Yeah. Um, with our ball canisters, four-way adjustable, um, with a bunch of different parts, probably from Renline, uh, Patrick Motorsport, and Elephant Racing. Um, okay. So yeah, there'll be there'll be a uh, it'll be it'll be a race car. Yeah, I think I think you've tantalised Yaz with the spec sheet already. I know he's uh, he, he talks a lot about um, elephant racing. I know they've got fantastic parts. So yeah, they do, they do. Uh, the the um, this nine nine three here is a um, is a car I I completed not that long ago, um, and fundamentally it came to me with the the engine already done from uh, from the previous owner. So that kind of gave me. Um, license to really go to town on, on the remaining modifications mm. um, and going back into uh, to running gear uh, this car I've gone through and, and rose jointed everything with um, every single control arm these are multi leg suspensions so every single piece within it um, and it's all a mixture of uh, Renline uh, Patrick Motorsport and Elephant Racing um, and it's really it's just about streetable street legals just so I can get it to and from the track um, but essentially, it is really something that doesn't work in the real road. It can get you up a motorway to get to a racetrack, whether it's on the continent, um, without having to trailer it, which was the ultimate goal. Um, but it's really designed for, for track use. And I think it goes to show that with me personally, when it comes to modifications, if I'm not doing the most effective modifications, which is just driver training and weight loss, um, then I really Agreed. go up to running gear. Running gear oh, is a really good yeah. part. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think that's all we've got time for today. But uh, I just wanted to say, Frank, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You've been wonderful. And uh, again, thank you for taking an hour of your time for, for us here. So really appreciate no, it. It was, it was a real pleasure. Thank you very much for taking a kind interest. Um, and uh, listen, keep safe. Um, keep yourself out of trouble. And, and hopefully, uh, hopefully um, if everything goes according to plan, I'll, uh, I'll see it all cool and, and we'll grab a bit. Hell yes, man. We will do. No worries. You take care of yourself, Frank. Thank you so much. Cheers, fella. Thanks again. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye.